Mr. Greg Bowser with the Chemical Association. He's a, he's the head man. Mr. Bowser, how you doing, sir? Doing great, Moon. How are you, sir? Man, I am doing superb. I, our timing couldn't have been better or worse. And I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of look at it as both. It's good to have you on, first of all, sir. It's an honor. But number Thank two you. is Thank when I when you read about what happened with Georgia Pacific, and then yesterday, uh, you know. Basically, Exxon just pulled the, the exemption deal and said, hey, we, we're not going to worry about it. But, hey, in the future, we may not be investing here. And uh, I want you to talk a little bit about that because, you know, my dad worked in a chemical plant for 35 years. He worked at Dow Chemical. And I uh, ended up uh, being a supervisor on a pipeline for his last 15, 20 years. And, uh, you know, so we know all about it and plants and how important those jobs are. But uh, can you talk a little bit about what you saw yesterday? Because I know you were one of the people in the Chemical Association to rally behind Exxon. We need those jobs, that's for sure, just like we needed those Georgia Pacific jobs. Yeah, you're right, Moon. This was a, you know, industrial tax exemption has been around for a long time. It really helps the, the state recruit manufacturers, people that put up uh, uh, capital intensive projects. And if you look at what's happened over the last, uh, the last two years, uh, that program has been under attack because, uh, you know, people have, have, have been able to say things about it that, that that's really not true. And this is what happened in the Exxon case. I mean, um, Exxon's, uh, you have the, the probably the number one taxpayer in the parish, property taxpayer in the parish, and they come under attack because they say they're not paying enough. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, how, you know, if, if you're number one, if you're number one, you know, you, you get a guy that's the number one sponsor of your show, and you call yeah. him up and say you're not paying enough. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, Greg, I'm not going to do that. But I, I got a little <laughs> bit of sense. But, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So you, you're talking about common sense things. Uh, I'm going to play a deal, and I won't play it for you. I'll play it later. Uh, somebody put out a deal about how important the ITEPs are, and, and, and let's talk a little bit about how important this is. When you compare to Texas, where they don't have income taxes and they don't have corporate income taxes, you can't do the comparison. If we weren't doing this, then we wouldn't have any business. The people would just go to Texas or go to other places. I don't think people really understand that – the, the together Louisiana and together Baton Rouge are just looking at all the money they can pull from a business, not understanding profits. You have to make a profit. And not mentioning all the things that companies like Exxon has done for people who go to work in these plants. I mean, these are jobs. This is really what we need, Louisiana jobs. It, it, it is. And I'll give you an example. What happens with people, what people don't understand is uh, – when a, when, a, when a company is given an incentive, like the industrial tax exemption, to locate uh, in Louisiana, if, the, if, that, if that exemption is turned down, the company doesn't lose anything. They just go somewhere else. And the problem is, you know, you, you don't get any tax dollars. For example, if you got somebody that wants to locate here, several years ago there was an Exxon plant that was looking at locating somewhere, and, and uh, they were going to locate, I think, either in uh, St. James or in, in Iberville. Well, they ended up going to Galveston. Yeah. Well, According to, if you, if you read the Together Baton Rouge's thing, well, all this tax revenue that the state was going to get by turning it down, what happened to it? Yeah. It doesn't exist. If, if the company <laughs> does not locate, it's gone. And that's the thing that really is, is really shameful is that they mislead people into thinking, all you got to do is vote against this thing, and all this money is going to start rolling in. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen. It only happens if the project locates there anyway, and, and that just doesn't happen. Uh, and it's a shame when you look at what, what they've talked about and what's really what's real. I mean, you talk about education. You talk about teachers. You know, there's more exempt property, industrial exempt property, in Ibleville, St. Charles, and St. James mm -hmm. than there is in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all those teachers make more money than Baton Rouge. Yeah. So if the industrial tax exemption hurts you, how can they afford to pay it? Well, I'll tell you how. Because that plan, as you mentioned, they, they pay good jobs. They pay well. And the, 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 the spinoff in terms of the economic impact to the entire parish is substantial. Yeah. I mean, ExxonMobil, I think, is going to pay something like $32 million to East Baton Rouge in Texas. Yeah, but by the way, Everville Parish, just to give you a little background, uh, Greg, that's where I'm from. I grew up born in, in Plaquemine and also ended up in uh, Baton Rouge in school. So I'm very familiar with the plants. I had a daddy. I told you, Dial Chemical, I had two brothers that worked in plants as well. Uh, and, and, I, and I know the impact of families, and these are good-paying jobs. And, and, these, and these people are very confused by telling people, or confusing people by telling people that we can get a lot more from this plant. Well, no, you can't because everybody works off a margin. Everybody works on That's so right. much money. 
and you want them to be good community leaders, and you want them to pay well, and then you also want to slam them with taxes. This is our problem in the state right now, uh, Greg, that bothers me. It, it really bothers me what's going on. Well, you know, you, 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 you can't continue to do that because people are going to look at other places. For example, when we start looking at when they look around and start talking about where you're going to put, an, put a, a, a major chemical facility, where are you going to invest a billion dollars? That you in, in stuff that you can't move easily. So they look around and they calculate. You talk about margins. They calculate all the farmers, what goes into it, taxes and everything like that. The industrial tax exemption has been a big incentive that helps to equalize, give Louisiana, make Louisiana competitive. Yeah. Well, what you have to do today is you have to put zero in an industrial tax exemption se- uh, sector because you don't know what you're going to get. Listen, I mean, this is a perfect that, example. You have no clue. By the way, uh, I would agree with no exemptions. Greg, on one way, one way, mm-hmm. if we went to a Texas, more of a Texas model where we have no corporate income tax, we have no corporate tax, we have no business taxes, you would probably agree with me. That's fine. That's a different model. So when I saw one of the people, and I don't know if it was a pastor that jumped up and said, well, we'd be just like Texas if we, if we don't give them exemptions. I'm going, we're not even close to Texas if you don't do the exemption. <laughs> We've got the exemption. No. Now, I think you'd agree with me. We have exemptions uh, to make sure companies come here and invest here. Without them... Yeah. And we don't have the corporate, uh, uh, no corporate taxes like they do in Texas. It's not a comparable state. You can't compare. No, it's not. You're right. Let me give you some examples. You talked about no, no corporate income tax, no tax on uh, manufacturing equipment, no tax on manufacturing inputs. That's your electricity and gold. You got a unified sales tax collection, lower sales taxes, uh, both at the lo- local and state level. I mean, that's what you're competing with in Texas. And, oh, by the way, there are more people in Houston than there is in the whole state of Louisiana. Yep. So if you're trying to compete just on scale, you're gonna, you, you can't be even. No. And, you know, and they got good roads, good schools, and their homestead exemption moon is not $75,000. Yep, yep. I understand that, and I, and I know that's an argument, so, for, another, that's an argument for another day. Yeah. And I won't, even, I won't even go there with you, but one of the <laughs> things I do know is that we need manufacturing, and, and let me just take you to Georgia Pacific. Maybe I'm off. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you've heard nothing. But the word I got was that one of the reasons that they, they're going to shut down part of it and lose almost 1,000 jobs is that it's not as profitable as other Georgia Pacific plants. Now, I know there's more to the story, but is that part of the story of why we're losing uh, part of that Georgia Pacific plant? Well, I think, I think that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, I know, it's not all know, of it. I understand and, paper and no, that's things not have all changed. Of it. Right. But what happens is, you know, you have a whole world out there, and when the market starts to change, every little thing makes a difference on your margin. And if you're in a state that, that, that believes that you ought to just tax business because they can't go anywhere, well, you're going to be out of step pretty soon. And that's where we're going. That's where we're heading. I mean, you talk about taxes. You look at what, what's happened over the last couple of years in terms of just business taxes. Oh. It's, it's, going, it's, it's just getting out, out of hand. Well, the last, uh, since, and I'll just say it, since the new governor came in, it's been tax, 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 tax. And yet, no results. And that, yeah, you right. got more money in state government. And yeah, you can say, well, we balanced the budget, we got a surplus. Well, God, if you take $7 billion out from the business community and the private sector, you're going to have more money. But how do you maintain that? And there's the problem. It goes back to what you said. Okay, so we're going to pop this company and pop Exxon, and Exxon looks up and says, we got to reevaluate. Well, doesn't that send shock wa- waves to the rest of the uh, manufacturing companies, chemical industry? When they see something like that, they go, hold up just a second. We might be next. Maybe we need to wait yeah. and see what we're yeah. going to do about investment. And, you know, Moon, when we talk to guys that are talking chemical plants that are, that are looking at expansion and talking about, you know, expansion, expanding the Gulf Coast, either Louisiana or Texas, you know, those are the questions we get. And, and we have to be honest with those people and say, look, I, I can't tell you what it's going to be yeah. because you got to go, you got to go, you know, go to the local government. Uh, school board may hold you up. Uh, they're going to do that. And then after you go through all of that, your taxes still may be higher. Yeah, you've That's got what we're, uh, what we're facing. Governor Edwards did this in 2016 with our tips. He caused the problem. This is this is this is yeah. a major problem. And the thing that concerns me too, Greg, is when you know people come in and see what's happening with the oil and gas industry and the lawsuits. My question to you would be: I know Cory Booker, Senator Booker, came in a year, year and a half ago, and he was mm-hmm. he was slamming chemical plants, slamming them all over the place, and looking for lawsuits. And are you concerned about that coming toward chemical right. plants next if it's not already happening? Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're concerned about it because, you know, we're next. I mean, you know, they're going to go after the oil and gas guys, and then we're the next ones in line. And, you know, it's, it's like, a, like a friend of mine says all the time, says, you know, you know why people rob banks? Because that's where the money is. <laughs> they figure that's where the money is. Go get those guys. It has nothing to do with, 
what's right or wrong. And I think that's that's the thing that 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 is really disturbing. There, there are two real drivers in our economy here in Louisiana: is the is the oil and gas and chemical industry. Sure. And right now we're suing the oil and gas sector. Correct. Correct. And then and then and now y'all got to be next. And, yeah, and, and all of that. In the meantime, you're doing everything you can to stop industrial development from a chemical perspective. So right. you're going after your two drivers of your of your economy, and, and that just doesn't make sense to yeah. us. Mr. Greg Bowser, my special guest, Chemical Association uh, gentleman. Hey, you know, and I know you run it, and you're the head of it. Uh, you know, when you look at stuff like this, Greg, you, I, I would think the business community would have to cringe a little bit because – I've always said if we ever make this state a friendly business state, I mean really friendly, exemptions and stuff like that can go away. But until we do that, these are the things we need to hold companies here. And I'm looking up going, do y'all really want Exxon to really not expand? And that, that's what it looks like. That's, that's what it seems like. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to try to be competitive. And that's the thing that, that, that's really frustrating is it's very difficult for people to understand that, that you know, we're competing with other states. We used to compete with foreign countries, you know, that's where it was, but we're competing with other states. One, one of the things that the ITEP did, it used to be Louisiana's advantage was that you had one stop. You go to the Department of, 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 of Economic Development, and they walk you through the steps to make sure you do all the requirements, you get everything in line, and you get it all right first. If it's wrong, they send you back and you have a chance to fix it. This system now, what you have to do, Moon, you've got to go to the state, they say it's okay. Then you got to go to every taxing jurisdiction in which you're going to locate, and you got to beg them to to, to 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 do it. So hope, you hope you don't get held up there, and then maybe you'll get it. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, if you if you go to the state and it's okay, we'll approve it. And let's just say you go to Baton Rouge. You can name any any area, but there's a school board, there's a city council, right. there's a police chair. Right. Any right. one of those can shoot you down. Any one of those can say no. Wow. And if they say no, what happens is you can still get it if, if the rest of them say yes, but you don't get exempt from their taxes. And when you look at millages in every, in every parish, 50% or more of the millages are education. Yeah. 50% or more are education. So if they say no, you lose 50% of the exemption right there. Yeah. And, and they give you no, no credit for the construction jobs you're going to create, for the sales tax you're going you're to generate. Now, I got to tell you, you have several parishes in Bat- around Baton Rouge who said, hey, listen, uh, that's fine. Come on over here to this parish. Yeah. We had one parish approved one and said, hey, if, if Baton Rouge don't want it, we're the business friendly parish in the state. Come on over here. Yeah, but they're, they're the parish that government's not the sole. Uh, uh, that's correct. Uh, you know, and I hate to be ugly. I know we need government. I'm not anti government. I'm not anti tax guy. I think we ought to do all that. But, but they look at government as God, government is the key. If your government is the key to your community, you got a problem. It needs to be business. If you go that. through the state of Louisiana, Greg, and I know you do, when you look at these little towns and parishes that are drying up, it's a lack of businesses and lack of manufacturing companies. That's what you, that's what, yeah. you know, you go stick a manufacturing plant. I'm just using this as an example. In Dale High, Louisiana, instead of a lake reservoir and a golf course that everybody said this is going to grow economic development, and it didn't, go stick a Go stick a couple plants that had hire about 1,000, 1,500 people and see a little area blossom. That's how it blossoms. Yeah, that, you're exactly right. When I'm from a small area in St. Mary Parish, Franklin, and, yeah. uh, you know, man, you, you know, you talk about times have changed. The, the, the downtown Franklin used to be a place where people went come from all over the, all over the country to, to go to a little, a really little small downtown, really beautiful, decorated now. You go now, there aren't there any shops there aren't anything. Well, and the and reason for it is the business. It's all business. about jobs and businesses. That's and cool. look, here's another thing, Greg. And this is a little bit to do with what y'all do. We've, we've lost two congressmen. We may lose another one. That's because we have more people moving out. We're not growing like the rest of the country. And you need to grow. When these kids come out of college and high school, good-paying jobs keep them here. They get married. They have babies. They start their own business. I mean, all that stuff happens. When you don't have that, you see what's happening in Louisiana. It's frustrating me because you're like me. I love it here, and I don't plan. I'm not planning on going anywhere. No, I'm not either. I've lived other places, and this is home for me. And you know, that's the other thing is you get people come in from from out of state for just a second, and all of a sudden they say, "Hey, you know, uh, let's go after this this Exxon Mobil thing." You know, they don't need to be here. They got plenty of money. They make all kinds of money. And then you know, next thing you know, the guy who came in and started all that, he's gone. Yeah, moves on. 
By the way, the community behind. By the way, is it, you got a website or something people can get in touch with y'all or, or yeah, anything you like to, that? Uh, L- that's, yeah, lca.org, lca.org, and it's all up there, all the contact information. Email me. I love to hear from people. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know we employ almost 30,000 people in the state, direct jobs, high-paying yeah. jobs, and, you know, and, and it's just unbelievable what we have going on in our state right now. Yeah, I, I do too, and I think it's been elevated the last three years, and it's unfortunate. Greg Bowser, head of the Chemical Association. Hey, Greg, don't be a stranger. I'll be hollering at you again. Anytime, Moon. Thank you, my friend. God bless. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. You heard me talk with uh, Mr. Greg Biles of the Chemical Association. I'm humbled that he came on with us. We'll get him on again. Uh, there was a piece put out. And, and, and everything in this piece is what I've been talking about for dang near 25 years, but especially since John Bell Edwards and Jay Doran took over. This whole thing with his ITEP and Exxon and, and he losing these plants, this, is, this, is, this was signed into executive order by Bell Edwards. Okay, so these all these entities, and we don't have a friendly business state, and I've been telling you all that. If we were friendly to businesses here, they wouldn't leave, and they would come here. So we have this tax exemption thing to help them kind of be able to hang around and create jobs and people can go to work. And yet, you got certain this together Louisiana and together Baton Rouge, all these are very ignorant organizations when it comes to understanding how dollars work and jobs work. Oh, well, you can get more money from them. But well, this piece right here puts it all together, and it talks a little bit about Texas and their business climate. Listen to this. It's only about three minutes. ITEP, making Louisiana better. How do we make our schools better, our communities safer, our economy stronger? By investing in Louisiana through the ITEP Investment Incentive Program. When companies choose to put roots down in our state, they bring jobs, taxes, and assets to our parishes. In fact, for every job created in the chemical industry, more than eight jobs are created elsewhere in the state. But making sure companies choose Louisiana for future projects is an uphill battle. Just look one state to the west. Compared to Louisiana, Texas has a significantly lower local sales tax rate. No taxes on manufacturing utilities or equipment. A unified sales tax collection. And no corporate or personal income tax. That's why Texas has the third best business climate in the United States. Louisiana is ranked number 42. Even with all these economic incentives, compared to Louisiana, Texas has $5,700 higher average teacher salaries, 5% lower poverty rate, and 1.3% lower unemployment rate. So how can we compete? The Industrial Tax Exemption Program, ITEP, is the most important tool we have to bring new investments to our state. In exchange for bringing jobs and economic ventures, ITEP provides incentives for companies to invest here. When companies invest, communities do better. More people are working, buying homes and paying taxes. Schools, police departments, and fire departments are better funded. Roads and parks are taken care of. Why should you care? Parishes with ITEP have higher teacher salaries, higher employment, and higher annual salaries. For example, St. Charles Parish receives the third highest value of ITEP and ranks fifth in teacher salaries. Iberville Parish receives the fifth highest value of ITEP and ranks sixth in teacher salaries. And East Baton Rouge Parish teachers are paid $2,000 more than the state average. When a company receives the ITEP investment incentive, that company contributes to the local economy immediately through sales taxes, paid when equipment and other purchases are made, payroll taxes, paid on every person working for and with that company in Louisiana, as well as 20% of property taxes on the capital investment. These dollars pay for roads, police officers, teacher salaries, and other social services. After the investment incentive is over, 100% of property taxes flow onto the local tax rolls. In fact, over the next four years as ITEP contracts expire, more than $14.5 billion in industry investments will come onto the tax rolls of local governments across Louisiana. What happens without the ITEP investment incentive? Companies will stop coming to Louisiana, jobs will disappear, less money for teachers and police officers, and small businesses will start to fade away. What can you do to help? Contact your parish leaders and tell them that you support investment and growth here in Louisiana and in your parish. Yeah, uh, and by the way, that was about as awesome as a, a job of putting something together 
as I've seen, that was really simple for people to understand. Okay, and really simple to people to understand. Bell Edwards, John Bell Edwards, J. Darden, of course, Bell Edwards is the, considered the governor. J. Darden helped him get there with a knife in the back and for 2000, 237500 a year and about sixteen, eighteen thousand 18000 a month retirement for the rest of his life, uh, helped put Edwards in office. And, folks, and you heard me tell Greg that I'm, I, I would be against our attempts too. I would. If we made our state friendly like Texas, third best economy, we're 42nd. You got Bell Edwards in the, in the advocate, pro advocate media press journal for Edwards telling people how great it is. And by the way, in Baton Rouge, not only we're we losing these jobs and Exxon could pull back on some of their investment. Uh, <laughs> Bell Edwards and them are telling people the economy is good. And then we find out that home sales are down 5.6% in one of the better areas of the state right now. And this governor has a lot to do with this, folks. And when you hear the lies of the governor, you can check it out on the Dead Pelican. I got my rant or at my Facebook or KPL's face, Facebook. Check it out, and it tells you the truth. We got ITEP for one reason. We're an unfriendly business state. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. As we rock and roll, let's jump gears again. It's an honor to have the Speaker of the House of the State of Louisiana with us, Taylor Barra. Taylor, how you doing, sir? Good morning, Moon. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Hey, thanks for spending a few minutes with us this morning. Uh, well, once again, they, uh, the advocate, I, I, don't, I hope you never even talk to them because they love defending the governor and pounding on you, and it's because you're the speaker. And, and, but you've been right on some things. Now, this deal with the uh, revenue forecast, before I get into what they said so people will know, you're not recognizing – to go spend money because you have some doubts about all this money coming in like they said. So let's start there so you can tell people. And by the way, you're doing – let me just throw this in. You're doing your job. It's four people on the committee, and if all four don't agree, they don't recognize it. So you have a right not to not to agree. And if they want to do three out of four, then change the rules or change the law. But it's four out of four. Since you don't agree, you've done nothing wrong, and you stated why you don't agree. So I wanted people to understand that as well. Certainly, and and you know, in, in the advocate opinion today, they talk about a they talk about a two decade tradition. It's actually a three decade tradition. Thirty years ago, when they established the revenue estimating conference, it was to avoid this very thing. It was a reform effort to stop you know the governor, legislators meeting on the floor, meeting in a room, determining the price of oil, and then adopting a forecast, and that's how much money they spent. That's what the reform and establishment of the revenue estimating conference was originally for. Sure. So when when the, when the law was passed 30 years ago, it has not been changed. It was to have four folks, one from the House, one from the Senate, the governor, and an economist, determine what the what the legitimate revenue forecast would be. They made the vote unanimous in the original um, legislation, and it remains that way today. So mm-hmm. to say when one person disagrees that you're abusing power – you know, Commissioner Dorden accused me at the last meeting of going against the spirit of the REC. I think I'm, I'm directly in line with the spirit. I think of the you're RC. perfect. I think you're perfect. In if, if we're not unanimous, there's a reason for discussion. And 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 my vote. I mean, they're calling it political, and the reasons are political. I'm um, just as political. Moon is. You know, we normally the REC will meet four times a year, spread our sp- spread out across the fiscal year. Sure. Um, and 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 we've met three times since November in less than 57 days. Wow, that's political. Yeah, because the minute we recognize revenue, they're going to spend it, <laughs> and and that's where the disconnect is. So they accuse me of playing politics by not agreeing with the numbers based on what I see as a good economic factor. They disagree with me, but but I'm not doing it because I, I want to spend money or don't want to spend money. I'm doing it because of the economics. They're calling meetings back to back to back to recognize revenue so they can spend it. That's fact. Yeah, but the problem, so I think you hit it on the head. It's all about, I want to spend it. I want to spend it. And, and then, by the way, that's going to obligate us to more next year. And all of a sudden we go, well, we got a budget problem. Well, that's because you spend every penny we get in. And, and I have respect for the budget process. The governor's executive budget is due to us at the end of February to the Joint Committee on the Budget. That's set up in statute. He's required to present it 45 days before our session begins in April. I, I totally respect that. Will he be able to include everything he wanted to include in the executive budget? 
Likely not, because I, I just don't think we're going to recognize revenue before he. Presents but if you, that but if you include everything he wants to include in budget, you'd have to add six billion dollars more to the budget. I'm not being ugly; I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> just add six billion but, more, and he's happy. Right. Well, and, and and here's the thing: including, you know, they continue to say I'm blocking the teacher pay raise that he's suggested. He has only suggested a teacher pay raise. I have not seen a plan on paper. I've not seen who's going to get the raise. He has not released those details of his suggestion. That wasn't my suggestion. The Advocate article today says I'm delaying the forecast review because I want to take credit for the teacher pay raise. I didn't propose a teacher pay raise. Yeah. I will gladly support it. I think it's badly needed. I'm just trying to make sure that sure. we can pay for it in all fairness to our teachers. Yeah. By the way, uh, just I just – Touch some of the article. House Speaker pushes po- politics deeper in the budget process. Uh, move down the third line. The perpetrator. That's you, by the way. It's House Speaker Taylor <laughs> Barra. It says, who is abusing his position on a four-man committee where decisions must be unanimous. How are you abusing your position if you can vote no, and it's a legal vote. It's th- it, it can be done anytime somebody wants to. And I'm laughing to perpetrate abuse. I mean, look at the words that are used by the pro Edwards press. It's phenomenal. All of a sudden, your vote is abusive. I don't understand that. But it's not abusive, by the way. If you vote for mega taxes and you vote for spending $6 billion more, that's not abusive to the taxpayers. But correct, I don't correct. understand that. Well, and, and here's the thing. I mean, when, when, when you look at economics, and I, I call it, you know, selective economics where – you pick the categories that may happen to be showing somewhat positive direction. But when, in fact, and, and I've said this for the, for the last three RDC meetings, when you sit in Acadiana where I sit in the financial industry, there is no booming economy that, 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 that I'm seeing yet. Are there T- some Taylor, by the way, uh, Taylor, by the way, not to interrupt, but I am interrupted. Uh, Baton Rouge, uh, sales, uh, home, sales of homes are down 5.6%, and that's one of our better areas of the state. That's correct. So, so That's nobody correct. wants to look at all that. I know you're looking at real numbers, and you're making a decision based on, you know, and they say it in an article, where well, they want to spend more. Well, I know they do. We know, we yeah. know this is about well, spending. This is it, spending. You know, when I, when I brought up the, the average personal income for Louisiana residents came down in the third quarter. Well, they quickly countered it by saying, but it was a great first and second quarter. Well, that, that, that's great. But that means the average of the average income that someone is Louisiana residents are making is coming down. Yeah. So I mean, you 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 cite the things you like, you ignore the things you don't. Correct. I'm trying Correct. to be as 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 equitable as I can to say, do we really have 150 million dollars more? Can, to spend? I, can I ask you a question? The I, this is my assessment. If I look at this, the reason why we have more money, we have raised a lot of taxes. Number two, Absolutely. they stole the Trump tax cut. The governor could have been for, hey, hey, y'all, you guys get together and, and let's get this money to the people. They didn't do that. They ought to have more money. They ought to, but it's not excess because the economy's booming. It's an excess because of overtaxation. You guys tried to slow that down. Y'all only wanted to spend, I think, what, 97 and a half, 98 percent of the budget at one time. That is correct. In fact, you know, what we tried through legislation was, you know, doing a standstill budget where you – you only um, appropriate 98% of the expected revenue. That would take care of a 2% swing, swing, positively or negatively. Of course, this administration fought it feverishly. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If, if you don't recognize any additional revenue that we think might come to pass before June 30th, which is what they're asking us to do, when he presents an executive budget at the end of February, it is standstill to a point. He mm-hmm. will be able to spend $9.4 billion that's in the budget today. That's mm-hmm. in our official forecast. They want more than that. And and that's sure that's going to be the challenge going forward, and it really has nothing to do with who puts it in the bill. Regardless of when we recognize the revenue, whether it was in November or whether it's in April, it can get put in House Bill 1. It can get put in the supplemental bill if it's a current year okay. improvement. Nobody loses any dollars by waiting later in the year to do it. Yes, Speaking of which, in the 30-year reform that they talk about, well, they call it a 20-year reform, that is one of the, 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 the historical things that we've tracked. For 30 years, we track when we change the budget or change the forecast four times during the year. When we do it in the first half of the year, we get it wrong by over 6 to 8%. Wow. That's $600, $800 million error. The later we wait in the year, the more accurate we are, and that's what I'm But, you know, let's go back to what you said, you know, Mr. Darden uh, taking cheap shots at you. And the thing about it is he talked about the increase in the first two quarters, and you talk about it going back down in the third quarter. I don't know if J&M realized this, 
uh, there's four quarters in a year. Uh, am I correct? I think I'm correct about that. If the that first two are good and the third one's bad and the fourth one's maybe even worse because we don't know yet, well, my God, you got to figure the whole year. And I think you're being very prudent, and I think you're being real honest. And I also think you're looking at this from the perspective of we have a spending problem, guys. we got to get a grip on it. And if you read the advocate that pounded on you today, uh, they do say – that uh, if the forecasting committee cannot agree, it not only affects the current year's spending, <laughs> that is, again, spending, 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 spending. Right. So they're convinced the more they can spend, the better we are. That's not necessarily the best best uh, way to do things. That is correct. And, 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 you know, if what we were spending it on was promoting more economy, promoting, um, you know, job creation and those kinds of things. That's not necessarily what we spend it on. No, not the at bigger all. Parts of our budget are not used for economic development. That is for sure. Yeah, it says the uh, money coming. Yeah, it'll, it'll, Go ahead. I, I suspect that we will have a February REC meeting again. And we will we will dance this dance one more time, likely. Yeah. Um, the economists may come up with better numbers, worse numbers. We'll see what happens. But I still think we have a lot of questions that have to be answered. You know, have we paid out all the movie tax credits? Have we paid out all the historic tax credits? There's a lot of things that go on during the year that could grossly affect this this June 30th final balance. And that's the things that I'm trying to bring to light to make sure we get this right. We have been criticized over and over and over again on how wrong the REC is. Well, when you try and get it right and you're the lone voice to get it right, you're accused of abusing abuse. Yeah, but you mentioned, you mentioned a while back – a few minutes ago, that they've gotten it wrong so many times on average of about two fifty, three hundred million every time they've exactly. met. I mean, they've been gotten it wrong, and yet they're upset with you trying to take a different approach than what we always do. And that's what I said. What we're doing now under this governor is we're doing everything on steroids: more money, more taxes, so we get to spend more without really fixing the problem. Uh, I noticed that they said that you had vague questions about the impact of the federal tax changes declines on all prices and state economy. I don't think you've been vague. I think you've been pretty precise. Yeah, and, and here's the thing on the federal tax change, and that's the one that gives me the biggest concern. We started withholding last February more money on every Louisiana worker's paycheck. So for 11 months out of last year, we withheld more money than they likely will need. And, and we understood why we did it at the time. But when you, you can't ignore the fact that the change at the federal level affected folks that itemize their deductions. That's only 25% of our taxpayers, yeah. which tells me... I, actually, actually taxpayers. it's 25% of tax filers. I'm telling you, it's closer to 40% of taxpayers. I believe if you right, look at the numbers that I'm right on it, but I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I think if you correct, look at correct. it. But it's still, it's still young, pounding people like me, Brandon, people that we itemize. And that, we're, the, absolutely. we're the guys pulling the wagon. And there's two, two caveats to the folks that, that itemize. Some will no longer choose to itemize because of the changes. <clears throat> sure. And for the ones that still itemize, what you're able to itemize has changed sure. considerably. So you got that noise happening. For the people that don't itemize, we're probably withholding too much money off of their paycheck. So we're going to give a bunch of refunds come April and May. Wow. They, wow. they acknowledge that, but they can't put their, their, their number to it. And it doesn't seem to be a concern of theirs that if we owe fifty, sixty, seventy million dollars in refunds, that's gonna affect our balance before Good June thirtieth. And Good point. it's all of those things that, that I'm I'm just forcing the discussion. But you know and, what you I know, think it is too, to the forecast change. Yeah. yeah. You know what I think it is too? Uh, nobody wants to change the state, the media doesn't, the press doesn't, the governor doesn't. And so if you don't want to change you dis we always do it this way. I've heard it come out of Darn's mouth, but it's the way we always done it. You know, and it takes four votes and borrows the problem because you didn't do the same thing we always do. But if you look at the results of what we've always done, it's not pretty for Louisiana. That's correct. That is correct. So we will we will go at it again in February. It's going to be my estimate. They're not called the meeting yet, but I suspect there will be one, and there will likely be another one in March. And you know, by by April or May moon, you know, as we approach June thirtieth, and we need to get a House Bill one over to the Senate. I think I would be I f- at least feel that I'm making the most educated decision I can make when we reach that point. Yeah. Well, I think uh, speaking of House Taylor Barrow, no, tell I know you're right. I just need you need to tell people, and that's why I wanted to get you on a program today because they they being very unfair and Baton Rouge, and especially uh, the advocate and Jay Darn ought to never say nothing negative about you. He's been in the yeah, business for probably. thirty thirty something years. He ain't got it right yet. Yeah, I, I hate to say you get used to it, but you get used to it when you know you're doing it for the right reasons. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's water under the bridge. I know, but hang in there. Thank you so much. Some time. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank Anytime. You. Yes, sir. All right, we'll take a break. 
By the way, for the record, I called him. He didn't call me. All right. He didn't, matter of fact, he didn't even know they wrote the article in the Advocate when I called him. He never even saw it. All right. We got to take a break. More to come.